The following program is based on actual true stories on the high seas. These true stories are fish stories. Today, we're on both sides of the planet, in the Dominican Republic and Hawaii. But first, a recap of recent Marlin Quest action. In the DR, sport fishing aboard the Chaser, Captain Tim Richardson and his reliable deckhands chased down several Atlantic blue marlin. It was a field day for anglers Ken Corday and Dan Dore, but it came at a price. It hurt. Oh my goodness. He just wouldn't come up. So I force everything, leaning back, getting that rod straight up. Oh my gosh. It's like he's holding on to, to the bottom or something. Just going down. Yeah, I'm done. I'm cooked. Plus, Ken had a scrap with some Caribbean pirates, some ocean marauders. Halfway across the world on Hawaii's Kona Coast we saw an epic tag and release from a lady angler, a world record holder. If you hadn't noticed, big marlin fishing is pretty hot right now. The colorful island of the Dominican Republic. Explorer Christopher Columbus sailed here over 500 years ago and named this island Hispaniola, translated Little Spain. This is the most visited island in the Caribbean. Old rural charm meets the lifestyle of the rich and famous, including celebrity horse ranches and awfully big yachts. We're anchored in the Casa de Campo Resort, where the marina is one of our favorite hangouts. And it's a good day to go big game fishing. World marlin fishing continues in the Dominican Republic for blue marlin. We're fishing on light tackle, stand-up 30s, little blues. We get them in the spread, we'll pitch them a bait. We'll catch him up today. We're headed south, about 35 miles. A line of homemade buoys several miles long is today's target. Ken's been fishing with me since the first year I had the tradition, so that's like 16 years ago. And we're, we're good friends and enjoy each other's company and Ken's just one of those magic clients that whenever he turns up, we have good fishing and a lot of fun, and he's caught a lot of really nice fish with us in Australia, and it's great to see him come and try the DR and some other places with us, and we get to experience a, a different sort of fishing on, on, on the other boat. What is this sorcery? Ritual. It's not crazy. If it works. I got a double. Pull the right teaser down, Marlon. Right. Not one, but two fish are on. Dan's fish first, Ken. Keep it tight. We're good. I think we're hooked to a blue marlin here. Let it go, let it go. Now that Dan's fish has been released, Ken has free reign of the deck. There's braid underneath, it's like an hour 1,500 yards. There's plenty of line there, Ken, you're not gonna run out. We let go of Dan's fish a few minutes ago, and now Ken's getting a lot of line back. He uh, 
It's down probably about to the last 200 yards of braid left on the reel there, but uh, three quarters of a mile later, here we are. <laughs> Kenny hooked a fish quite some time ago, 25 minutes ago. And so far, we've been in the sun, then we went in a crazy wind, and then rain, and now the sun's coming out, and we still haven't seen the fish. But it's down there, it's huge. It's a, uh, it's a monster. Coming up, Ken is up for the good fight. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou? <laughs> and Captain Kevin passes over a hungry marlin. And a lady angler shows him who's boss. Marlin Quest is brought to you by Airmar Technology, the leaders in chirp transducer technology, and by the Royal Kona Resort, an oceanfront landmark in the heart of Kailua Kona, Hawaii. You've already made a great choice in electronics. Now, achieve sonar superiority with an Airmar chirp transducer, advanced chirp technology that can find them in wrecks and find them in the depths. That's sonar superiority by Airmar. At Release Marine, our custom woodworking facility specializes in handcrafted sport fishing equipment and yacht furniture. Quality, durability, imagination. Release Marine. Always lead, never follow. Just a little while ago, Ken and Dan picked a fight with a couple of bullies. Dan finally brought his in for a tag and release. Now, Ken has the honors. The marlin is an amazing species. It's a part of the billfish family found anywhere around the world. The males grow up to 300 pounds, but the females grow even bigger. The largest caught in Hawaiian waters was over 1,800 pounds. I'm here, I'm here, Romeo. Now hanging on the end of the line. <laughs> Marlin are as tough as tough gets. Releasing the fish is the ideal scenario, but sometimes a fight can get the best of a fish, and it dies at the back of the boat. And it'll be taken into the harbor, rather than feed it to the sharks. It'll feed families. We had a double on, a little fish and a bigger fish. So the little fish was closer to the boat. We had to get that while this guy just kept running line, running line, running line. And eventually what happened with that much line out, the marlin got wrapped up in the line, couldn't swim, and died. So when they die like this, we got to harvest them. We got to take them in, feed the people. It's the right thing to do. One in every 50 goes in the boat like this, maybe one in 100. Hooks work, but sometimes they work too good. Marlin Quest moves over 5,000 miles due west across the Pacific to the Hawaiian Islands. Hawaii's Big Island is home to stunning waterfalls, breathtaking landscapes, and massive volcanoes. Sport fishing? Well, it's been here since the 1920s. They built the old Kona Inn primarily to accommodate fishermen. This is the home for Big Blue Marlin. Honokohau Harbor. This is ground zero for the best captains and charter boats in the world. Captain Kevin Hibbert has piloted these waters for nearly 30 years. Today, his wife, Charisse, is one of the photographers on a camera boat documenting a long-running tag and release tournament. She's about to get pressed into double duty. The media boat rarely puts lures out with hooks in the water. The fish is attracted by their teaser and it's the perfect time to get some underwater footage. Today, they have a small camera in a streamlined housing called a Troll Pro. They slide it in the water and position the unit so they can see the aggressive fish. The temptation is too much. So they put out one of their favorite lures. In a 
matter of minutes, they're hooked up. And Charisse goes from photographer to angler. Kevin maneuvers the boat in high speed and circles the fish, putting the boat in a favorable position for the fight. marlin in, they notice that it's lost its bill. This happens when marlins spar with other fish or swimming too fast into shallow rocks. Although losing their bill may be an impediment to their success rate when chasing bait fish, most will agree that they're extremely aggressive on the strike. back in the Dominican Republic. Last night I had black beans and black rice and uh, calamari all mixed up like a risotto. Most delicious thing, Spanish black beans and rice. Black rice. Black rice. It yeah. was sensational. With a couple of big Camerani shrimp right in the middle of it. Maybe we should just talk about food today. Coming up. We were watching and just kept looking at this fish. It's a thousand pound surprise. Wow, <laughs> what a nice fish. Plus, fighting a 200 pound marlin on 35 pound test is a man's game. Marlin Quest is brought to you by Airmar Technology, the leaders in chirp transducer technology, and by the Royal Kona Resort, an oceanfront landmark in the heart of Kailua Kona, Hawaii. I bought, you know, every single brand of manufacturer's hooks and I laid them on top of each other. And then I realized over the last 40 years of sport fishing, we have not moved the needle at all on our hookup percentage. Fishing is king here in the seaside village of Kailua Kona, Hawaii. It's a small town that has great historical significance. It was the first capital of the unified kingdom of Hawaii. Hulihe'e Palace was the vacation home for Hawaiian royalty until 1914. Mokuaikawa Church was Hawaii's first Christian church built in 1820. And across the street, the Kona Inn was built in 1928 as the first hotel for visitors to the Kona coast, most of whom came in search of marlin and other plentiful game fish. There's a story around every corner. Well, my father was a charter fisherman too. Uh, one of the first ones, he started in the days when they didn't have any radios. I was in grade school when I got interested in fishing. I wanted to go along with him on his charters and he 
said, okay, he put a chair in the corner of the cabin and he said, sit there and don't bother nobody and just watch. So that was the extent of my first fishing experience, just watching as everything went on. My charter for the day on the CBB3 was a fella who the previous year had fought a marlin for four hours. And so he came back the following year to do battle again, but this time his wife wanted to do the honors. So we headed up to the grounds. As we got close to the corner, we finally got the bite and she worked on this fish and she headed up to the boat in 20 minutes. Lance got hold of the leader, took one pull and fish came out of the water and then she freaked out when she saw this big fish. By then she wanted out of the chair. So we put the husband in the chair and it was like a yo-yo battle. He'd reel it in to a certain point and it will just turn around and head out to sea again. So this went on for four hours until we finally got the leader again. So I stuck the gaff in it and by then we were too tired to pull this fish all the way through the door. We only got the head halfway through and we gave up. So we just tied it up, dragged it back to Kylo Pier. I didn't even think about it being a thousand pounds, you know. We were just happy we caught this fish. When we backed up to the pier and started hoisting this fish up, people were watching and just kept looking at this fish. Put it on the scales and it weighed 11.95. Wow, <laughs> what a nice fish. For now, we say aloha to the Hawaiian Islands and hang our hopes on another hookup in the DR. Ballyhoo, a fish with a half beak, is the bait of choice today. Rigging bait is an art. This crew could actually be called bait artisans. Maybe not. Finally, Hello. a bite on the ballyhoo. choice in electronics. Now, achieve sonar superiority with an Airmar Chirp transducer. Advanced Chirp technology that can find them in wrecks and find them in the depths. That's sonar superiority by Airmar. Big game fishing. Is that a big fish can bring havoc to the calmest of days? It's Ken's turn now. It's a small Atlantic blue marlin, but quite the tiny dancer.
Got a bunch of little jumps on the leader. One fish all around. I think it's our ninth fish this week and uh, all light tackle 30s. Nice little blue marlin. We're gonna go get another one now. One of the most important things when you're out fishing is that you drink enough water. You gotta keep drinking water, but you gotta eat too. Because you expend a lot of energy out here, believe it or not, not just sitting around but doing stuff. Real fun to eat on the water. And if you catch a fish, like a tuna fish, and, and eat that for lunch, that's that's even better, you know? Catch a nice little black fin or yellow fin and eat that for lunch. And oatmeal raisin cookies, don't forget. Yeah, you gotta throw those in. And once in a while a cupcake, but you know, only on special days.